Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. So let's get started. A semicircle with radius one, a unit square, and a circle with radius r are inscribed in a three by two rectangle as shown. Find r, which is the radius of the circle. Awesome, let's get started. Now, as you know, Pretty much with all the puzzles that we have on this channel, uh, we start by making some connections, correct? Okay, so let me go ahead and connect these two centers right here, which is going to be a good thing to do. And then what we're going to do here is I'm going to drop a perpendicular that passes through the center of the circle. So that way I can, you know, use the Pythagorean theorem. So we get some right triangles here. And what else should I be doing? Well, obviously, this circle here is inscribed in an interesting region here. It's kind of touching the square in the corner, right? Uh, and it's tangent to the circle. So I would like to connect one of the vertices, which is the closest one, right? To the center of the circle. Awesome. But not only that, I'm also going to be extending this line here so that I can take advantage of some lengths because without it, it's kind of like meaningless. So what I like to do is I'd like to extend this side here. There we go. I think this is what we need pretty much. Okay, let's get our equations straight then. Okay, so this is also another right triangle. So the key is basically coming up with these two right triangles and then working off of this basically, okay? So that's the plan, but let's mark some lengths. So this is R, this is R, and this is R. We know that um, we have a semicircle with radius one, so this is one. Obviously, this is one as well. And the square is a unit square, so that's one, and that's one as well. Awesome. So that means this is also one, and this is also one. We're not gonna use all of these lengths, but just to let you know. Awesome. Now, a couple of things that are interesting here is, first of all, what about this length here? I don't know it, right? Well, I'm gonna call it x then. Well, since the radius of the semicircle is one, this piece is going to be 1 minus x because their sum is 1. Great. So what, what can I do? Well, I still need to find the height of this small triangle here. How do I find that? Well, if you think about it, this is 1. And the whole thing needs to be 2. By the way, we're given that this is a 2 by 3 rectangle, which means the height of the rectangle is 2. So this means just 1 minus r, doesn't it? Okay, because together these two pieces make 1. If you subtract r from it, it's going to be 1 minus r. And this piece absolutely is going to be x. Awesome. So we're ready to go. All right, let's roll. Now, I'm going to start with the small right triangle. So the small right triangle tells me what? It tells me that x squared plus 1 minus r squared is equal to r squared. So I can get something nice from here. Let's go ahead and simplify this. 1 minus 2r plus r squared is equal to r squared. r squared cancels out. Isolate x squared. You know the drill, right? And then square root both sides. So from here, we get x equals the square root of 2r minus 1. Obviously, r is greater than 1 half here. You could probably tell, right? It's greater than 1 half, and that's a positive quantity. Otherwise, it wouldn't be x squared anyways. Okay, so cool. So I was able to get x in terms of r. I am just going to use my other equation. Let's go ahead and do that here side by side. The other equation comes from this right triangle here. And its base is 1 minus x. So I can start with that. 1 minus x squared plus, what's the height? Now, we got to be careful here. The height is not 1. It's 1 plus 1 minus r, which means the height is actually 2 minus r. You can also look at it this way. The whole thing is 2. You subtract r from it. So you end up with 2 minus r. All right? 2 minus r and that squared. And the hypotenuse of this big triangle is going to be 1 plus r, which is kind of nice. Cool. Now we do have two equations. We should be able to solve this. But let's go ahead and simplify the second one. I can probably do that here where there's more room because I don't think I'm going to be able to fit it there. So let me go ahead and do that here. So I get from here 1 minus x squared. So let's go ahead and expand it. 1 minus 2x plus x squared plus 4 minus 4r plus r squared 
which is equal to 1 plus 2r plus r squared. Awesome. r squared cancels out. Beautiful, because we don't want to get a quadratic. And again, our goal here is what? To get x in terms of r so that we can use these equations together. Because my goal is to find r, so I need to get rid of x. So that's why I'm going to isolate x here. But x is not very easy to isolate, but that's okay. We can keep the x squared minus 2x here. And actually, one of the things I can do is, I don't know if, if you want to do it, but I can keep the 1 minus x squared. Okay, never mind. We don't have to do it. Okay, fine. We're just going to combine these. So 1 cancels out. Never mind. I do have a 4 here. I don't want to keep the 4 here. Um, maybe I'll put everything on the right-hand side. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Add 4r to both sides. That's going to give me 6r and then minus 4. Awesome. Now, I did get another equation like this one, but this one doesn't have the x by itself. It's just x squared minus 2x, but that's okay because our first equation is good enough. So we can substitute the square root of 2r minus 1 for x. So that's going to give us the square root of 2r minus 1 squared minus 2 times the square root of 2r minus 1 equals 6r minus 4. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and expand this, simplify this as much as we can, and then solve for r. Great. So I have a radical, so if I square it, it's going to be what's inside. And this stuff here is going to just be 2 times that. I don't really need parentheses there. And then, okay, I'm, I'm not uh, making any mistakes here because I, I thought I was missing a 1 there, but it's not there because we have x squared minus 2x. So that, that looks good. Okay, cool. And then 6r minus 4. Now, what I'd like to do is I would like to have the radical on the right-hand side where it's positive. doesn't matter. No big deal, but uh, I just like it that way. And then bring the 6r over here with the positive 4. So that should give me uh, uh, 4 minus 1, which is a 3. And then 2r minus 6r is going to be negative 4r. Now, at this point, I go ahead and square both sides, correct? Okay. This is where we get rid of the radical and come up with a quadratic. So this is going to be 4 times the quantity 2r minus 1 equals 9 minus 24r plus 16r squared. And this is 8r minus 4 equals 9 minus 24r plus 16r squared. Now let's go ahead and uh, collect everything on the right-hand side where r squared is positive. Okay, negative 24r minus 8r is going to be negative 32r. And then I have a 9 plus 4 is going to be... 13. Awesome. This is my quadratic equation. What can I do? I can solve this with the quadratic formula. Awesome. It's a miracle, right? We have a formula. Awesome. Great. We don't have a quintic. We don't have, uh, we don't have anything higher than a quintic, but we do have the quartic. We do have the cubic, uh, so on and so forth, but they are quite complicated. All right. So what do we do? Quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, don't worry, we'll take care of that, minus 4ac. Okay, awesome. All over 2 times a, which is 32. A lot of 32s, great. Now, we do get 42 squared from here, which is, uh, you know, 2 to the 10th power, which is 1024, no big deal, but let's do it in a smarter way. So I want to be able to factor this. Well, obviously, 32 squared contains a 64, correct? Because it is 32 times 2 times 16, and this is a 64. And obviously, uh, 64 times 13 contains a 64. So there you go. Your common factor is 64, which square rooted will give you 8. So see how that simplifies nicely? Okay, most of these problems are that way. So we'll take out an 8 for the square root of 64. And inside, you'll find 16 minus 13, which is fairly innocent, right? Like basic, that's going to be a 3. So we have root 3 there. There you go. Okay, we can't divide everything by 32, but we can divide everything by what? 8. If we do, we get 4 plus 2 root 3. Well, that's actually, that's not right. It should be a root 3 because I'm dividing my 8. I'm still thinking, what, what am I dividing by, right? Okay, I'm dividing by... 
All right, let's start over here, okay. So I'm dividing everything by eight, right? Four plus root three over four, or that's R1, that's R2, four minus root three over four. So at this point, you gotta go back to your figure and decide which value you wanna use, but you wanna have an idea, right? I mean, what is the square root of three like? It's like 1.7-ish, right? It's about 1.7, eh, not, not a bad approximation at all for the R purposes. So 4 plus 1.7 is like 5.7-ish, let's say 5.6. Uh, divide by 4, you're going to get 1.4. So this is like 1.4-ish, right? Approximately. And what about this one? I know you, some of you guys might be thinking like, this is not approximately. Okay, you got to put two of those, fine. So this one is going to be like 4 minus 1.7, which is going to be 3.3-ish, right? Is that right? No, 2.3. 2.3, let's say 2.4 divided by 4, that's going to be like 0.6-ish. Okay, great. So one of the values that I get is less than 1. The other one is greater than 1. And remember, the beginning of this video, we said something about the size of R, like possible size. If you look at this picture carefully, you're going to notice that R is greater than 1 half. And there's a reasoning behind it because uh, we had the square root of 2r minus 1, which needs to be a real number, so on and so forth. But notice that it's definitely less than 1, right? You can tell that the 2r exceeds 1, so r is probably something like 0 0.6 maybe, something like that. Okay, let's go back to our findings, and there we go. We're going to go with r2 because that's the one that fits the picture. All right, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.